Happy Friday. Thanks for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Michael Aaron. Time now for us to start the show with a look at the forecast. Meteorologist Scott Covert over in the Weather Center. Scott, you might be wondering, why is Michael dressed so goofy today with his bow tie? It's not goofy. It's, it's stylish for the record. It's stylish and timely. I heard you were down exactly. at the world famous Oakland today, That's right? That's right. It is Derby weekend, so we're celebrating, getting a little early start here. And you say it'll be a perfect forecast for the Derby, not to steal your thunder, but we might have to deal with some thunder first today, right? Yeah, you know that there is going to be some thunderstorms this afternoon. Thankfully, they are going to clear out in time for this weekend. It'll be a bit of a rocky afternoon before we get to that nice weather. Let's take a look live outside. We're looking off to the west and you can see those clouds starting to build into the area. That's likely to be the trend. As we take a look at our satellite and radar, we're going to notice that complex. This is round one of thunderstorms moving in from the southwest. You've seen them blossom there as we loop that over the last uh, couple of hours or so. Temperatures surging into the upper 70s a few folks likely to crack into the 80s today. Doppler radar does show that shower and thunderstorm activity ongoing in southwest Arkansas. Now, none of these thunderstorms are severe at the moment, but the one moving through Clark County just south of Arkadelphia crossing Interstate 30. That one did result in some half inch hail earlier. Now that is below severe limits. And of course, uh, it also produced some gusty winds in excess of about 40 miles per hour. Again, nothing severe at this time, though we do anticipate these to continue to develop. They're going to strengthen and they're likely going to be moving through our area in the Little Rock Metro over the next few hours. Again, that's round one. Round two moves in later tonight, and as you can see, a high risk of severe thunderstorms. That's not common, at least for this part of the state. For South Arkansas, that level four out of five. That's going to run through tonight. Central Arkansas under a medium risk. That's a level three out of five. Future radar shows that round one continuing to move through this afternoon. We'll see a break, and then I'm going to back that up. We'll see there's the break in activity this evening before this main line. That's the one we're mostly concerned with. That's going to be packing some damaging winds in excess of 60, 70, possibly 80 miles per hour. It's going to be racing through our neck of the woods later this evening. This is a look at midnight. It's knocking on our back door. Once it exits the state, though, things start to calm down. In fact, we're actually going to see some sunshine all weekend long. We'll take a look at that coming up. Well, we know the folks at Oaklawn, they're going to be watching the weather today and they're going to be excited for that forecast tomorrow because the excitement is building ahead of tomorrow's Arkansas Derby. And unlike last year, racing fans, they're actually going to be able to see it for themselves in person. The horses will run all weekend. Here's new video of them out on the track this morning. They are training there. First post is at one o'clock today, so just under an hour. And the first post is at noon tomorrow. Gates will open at 10 a.m. for that. And while all the seats are sold out, the infield will be open tomorrow and Sunday for general admission. Masks are still required. You have we ask that you wear your mask when you enter our facility. If you're walking around, if you're going to a mutual line, if you're going to uh, buy something at the concession stands, we ask that you wear a mask. Obviously, if you are at your box in your box seat, you're out in the infield, you do not have to wear a mask. We just ask that you still be respectful of the social distancing and things like that. Oakland is debuting new amenities just in time for the Derby. That includes a new coffee shop. You see it there and the new Buglers restaurant. It's open as well. Trackside views included. The hotel opens to the general public later this month. Our Jordan Howington is in Hot Springs. She'll have more on the excitement surrounding the Derby tonight at 5 and 6. All right, let's get to some breaking news here at noon. Rapper, actor, and record producer DMX has died at the age of 50. This announcement just coming in within the past hour or so. The Grammy-nominated performer suffered what doctors called a catastrophic cardiac arrest one week ago today. The reason for that cardiac arrest is not yet clear. We're awaiting word on his funeral services. Also today, Britain's Prince Philip has died at age 99. Queen Elizabeth's husband was just months away from his 100th birthday. CBS's Ian Lee reports from Windsor, England. Signs of a nation in mourning. The flag at Buckingham Palace flies at half staff. The news of Prince Philip's death posted at the gates. The 99-year-old royal passed away peacefully this morning at Windsor Castle. Prince Philip earned the affection of generations here in the United Kingdom, across the Commonwealth, and around the world. Prince Philip, also known as the Duke of Edinburgh, was last seen in public a few weeks ago after he spent a month in the hospital for an infection and a heart condition. He was the longest royal consort in British history and was at Queen Elizabeth's side for more than seven decades. 
Historians say the prince will be remembered for both his charm and, at times, controversial comments. He was probably the most good-looking royal in history, but at the same time, he had his opinions. He knew what he was thinking. He, he was never easily swayed. And so she could depend on him in a way that no one else could. People are already laying flowers here at Windsor Castle. This is where Prince Philip spent much of the pandemic with the Queen. He was one of the best royals, if I'm honest, you know what I mean? Kind of thing, kind of, you know, had a great character, charisma. The Greek-born aristocrat, who served in World War II, retired from public engagements several years ago. He carried out more than 20,000 of them on behalf of the Crown. Ian Lee, CBS News, Windsor, England. Because of coronavirus restrictions, royal officials say Prince Philip will not have a state funeral nor lie in state for the public to pay their respects. His funeral will be held at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Texas officials are investigating a shooting that left one person dead and five others hospitalized. An employee at the cabinet shop where that shooting happened is now charged with murder. Maria Villarreal has more from the scene. He's got a uh, report of active shooter at 350 Stone City. The chaos unfolded as shots rang out at a local cabinet manufacturing facility. Police say the gunman entered Kentmore cabinets and opened fire, leaving one person dead at the scene. A source said he was armed with an assault-style rifle. By the time police arrived, the suspect had already fled the area. Hey, I need a couple trauma kits over here with a gunshot victim. Five people with gunshot wounds were immediately taken to the hospital. Another person was also hospitalized after suffering an asthma attack. About an hour after the shooting, sources tell CBS News multiple law enforcement agencies tracked the suspect to his home about 30 miles away. As police attempted to apprehend the suspect, he opened fire, striking a trooper. The uh trooper who was injured was flown to here, St. Joseph's Hospital, where he is in stable condition. The suspect was finally taken into custody about an hour later. Police have identified him as 27-year-old Larry Bolin. Police say he's an employee at the facility and he's been charged with murder. Everybody's in shock because the guy, he was a very peaceful guy and calm, you know, he was very calm all the, all the time. Investigators have yet to determine a specific motive for the shootings. We live in, in this nation that got all the blessings and I don't know what this happened. I don't, I don't get it. The city of Bryan actually borders College Station, Texas, which is the home of the Texas A&M Aggies. They are very tight knit here and this community is starting to rally around the victims of this shooting as well as the owners and the employees of the business behind me. As of right now, we do know that the trooper is in stable condition and the four other victims that were taken to the hospital are still listed as critical. Mireya Villarreal, CBS News, Bryan, Texas. Mireya, thank you. Little Rock homicide detectives released new information on the fourth killing so far this month. 24-year-old Deshaun Stokes of Little Rock was found suffering gunshot wounds at an apartment complex on North Chico Road. This was shortly before 4.30 yesterday afternoon. Stokes was pronounced dead on that scene. Uh, police have interviewed multiple witnesses and developed several leads, but they have not released any suspect information to the public. We'll keep following this story for you and provide any updates right here on THV 11 and THV 11.com. An African American family in Bryant is raising their voices after their neighbor called the police on their 10 year old son. That little boy Jackson was outside doing what he loved, pretending to be a Navy SEAL with his toy gun there. A neighbor called police on him after the boy told her it was a toy gun. The caller was concerned about their bird feeders. I can't shoot birds with this toy gun. So why? Why after all of that would you call? The only thing that I could gather from that is that, you know, it may have been because of his skin color. I feel that toy guns aren't meant to be bought for black children, which is very, very sad. The officer who arrived on the scene spoke with the family, explaining the importance of the orange cap on that toy gun. The officer adding that he hopes this situation does not deter Jackson from becoming a Navy SEAL. An alternative hate crimes bill, Senate Bill 622, has now gotten approval from the House Judiciary Committee and is heading to the House floor. The bill promises long prison sentences when a criminal targets victims because of their characteristics. It does not define whose characteristics are protected, unlike the original hate crimes bill, which got stuck in committee. Some lawmakers preferred the original bill and say this new one is too vague. Right now, Arkansas, one of just three states without a hate crime law on the books. Police are warning people that catalytic converter thefts are on the rise in central Arkansas. 
The muffler shop in Little Rock says thefts have gotten so bad that they've had to repair between 200 and 250 mufflers just this year. It's not a cheap fix either. A normal converter job can run anywhere from $600 to $1,400. But if a thief is determined to steal, the catalytic converter is an easy grab. Right here's where they normally go. They sit beside the engine transmission. Here's this side that they had stole the other side before we fixed it so you can see what it looks like. The best way to prevent a theft is to mark it either with paint or some kind of scratch. As for cages, an exhaust shop manager says that only slows the thieves down.